Good morning, fourth graders. Welcome to our technology class. This is week 33. Um, I can't believe it's week 33. But uh, so I hope that you're enjoying code.org. I was trying to look through and make sure that everybody had signed in and at least started the code. But I did notice there was a few kids that did not sign into their account and they didn't complete lesson one. So I don't want to call the names out but um, I hope you probably know who you are. Um, if you did not sign into code.org yet, please do it this week. Um, I do not want you getting behind. It's just way too much code to get behind with. It would be overwhelming to try and catch up with this much code um, you know, at the end of the quarter or next week even, because we're moving on this week. So please, this week, I need everybody to sign into your code.org account and to begin the coding lesson. So you're beginning with lesson one. We did lesson two last week and we're doing lesson three this week. Um, so if you're having any problems getting into your account, um, come and see me. You can come down to the tech room. Um, you can come in your lunch. You're welcome to come. If you're like, I, I don't know, can you show me? Come in and I'll help you, okay? I really want you guys to do well. And if you you know, you know don't even know how to get into the account, then come so we can make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, and for the new students too, I did try reaching out to all new students. Um, I called, I emailed. If you are having any problems, please come and see me. I wanna make sure that you also feel welcome and a part of the class um, so that you can join in the other kids what we're learning. Um, okay, so let's move on. So this week, we're not going to do any new typing. I gave you a typing last week. It was the period and comma lesson. So maybe what I'll do is try to do every other week typing so it's not too much computer work for you guys. But let's move in. We're doing lesson three this week. This is called Conditionals in Minecraft. So I'm going to open it up. And I believe there's a little video. Oh, shoot. You know what? Uh, let me restart it because there was actually a little video for you guys. Hang on one sec, okay? Okay, let's watch the video, okay? Hello, you're just in time. Welcome to the Voyage Aquatic. I'm about to embark on a quest to find hidden underwater treasure, and I'm very glad to have your help. Who knows what we'll encounter along these mysterious waterways? We're meant to meet our first guide somewhere on this dock. Welcome adventurers! To complete the Voyage Aquatic, you'll need to solve a series of puzzles using code. Here's how it works. Your screen is split into three main parts. On the left, you'll see the Minecraft world. The middle area is your toolbox, where you can find coding commands. And on the large area on the right is your workspace. This is where you can start commands to build your program and control your movements. The instructions for each level are at the top of the page. Click the plus sign to change between long and short instructions. Try dragging blocks from the toolbox into a workspace, stacking them and then click the run button to execute your commands. You might have to try a few times to get it right and some of the puzzles have more than one solution, so experiment to see what works. If you want to try again, click the reset button to go back where you started. If you need to delete a command, just drag the block from your workspace back into the toolbox. Remember. Click run to see what your code looks like in action. Okay, enough messing around, fellow adventurer. Let's start coding to find some underwater treasure. All right, we're going to be coding to find underwater treasure. That sounds like something right up. Uh, maybe Puppy might be interested in that. Puppy, do you want to come and say hello? I know he's a little bit messy. Um, he, do he does have a few new masks to show you guys. Oh, look at this one. It says puppy. It's very cute. Do you want to show them the other one that you got too? Here, why don't you put it on? And you could show them the other one. He has two puppy masks now. Puppy, you are so stylish. Show them your other one. Do you like this one? Look how nice it is. Thank you, everybody. I don't really swim underwater. Otherwise, I would go get the treasure. Yeah. I bet he would. Um, okay, so let's see. So we are going to go ahead and if you remember, read the instructions. So it says you need supplies for the voyage ahead. Collect a boat 
from the chest. So we have to walk. So we're just trying to think how many times are we moving forward? So they have one, and then we have to go two, we have one, two, three. I think it's three move forward. So let's, let's just test it out and see. Yay! So pretty easy. Okay, so press continue. All right, boats are much easier than swimming in open water. Head to the end of the dock to hop aboard. So we need to get over to the boat. So we're gonna do one move forward to get here. And then we need to turn right. And then we're gonna do move forward, move forward to get to the boat. And let's see if he just gets right in. Yay, he got to the boat. He's so happy. <laughs> Great job. Grab the oars and pilot your boat across the open seas to catch the cod. So we're trying to get right over there. So let's see, how many times will we go forward? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, I think. We, it would be really helpful to have a repeat block, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So remember each of these little squares is kind of like one step in your algorithm. So let's go, let's see if he gets there. He's getting to the fish. Yay, he got to the fish. Wonderful job guys. Okay, well, let's watch this. I think this is gonna be helpful. Great, we've caught a codfish. Did you know if you feed a codfish to a dolphin, the dolphin will guide you to a shipwreck where there may be treasure. We must be getting closer. The next set of puzzles are bound to be trickier, so we better learn some more coding skills. What's this? A cave? Welcome, adventurers. My name is Squid. I noticed you were using the same set of commands over and over in some of the last puzzles. Must have been a bit tiresome. Do you ever wish you had a way to do something over and over again? Like, you know, washing dishes or brushing your teeth without getting tired or bored? <laughs> that would be nice. Computers are really good at doing the same thing over and over again, using coding loops. When you want your program to do the same instructions many times, you can use a loop. The loop contains instructions with the command to repeat until goal. Once your program starts a repeat until goal loop, it will keep running the instructions inside until it gets to the goal. Try this for yourself. Place the commands you want to repeat inside the repeat until goal block, click run, and watch it go. Well, that was a little weird. Who knew squids could code? I didn't even think they had fingers. So now we know about loops, let's use them to bag us some more treasure. Okay, ready? Let's get some more treasure. So um, I was just talking about loops because it makes our life a lot easier than having to keep putting in the same blocks over and over again. So let's try and think about it this time. It says, let's feed the cod to the dolphin. Use a repeat block to get across the ocean faster. So we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's, this says repeat until goal. So we know what the goal is. So just move forward. So can't get easier than that, right? <laughs> Yay, so that really shortened our code a lot. Instead of using seven blocks, we only had to use one. There's a Nautilus shell hidden somewhere. Explore the shipwreck to reach the chest. So we need to get over to the chest. So there he is over here and we need to get to the chest. So it says repeat goal, move forward. Let's just run the code and see what happens. Hmm, not going to work. Right, because he's crashing into something. What does he need to do? He needs to turn right. And then move forward. Oh no, it's not still not working. So he needs to turn right and move forward, right? And then he needs to turn right and move forward again. <laughs> I wonder if that'll work, let's see. Oh, he needs to move forward two times, sorry. Hmm. 
and he needs to move forward two times again. So it's taken it step by step. Yay. Did you see how I did the code wrong though? Let me show you guys. Oh, oops, I can't show you. It should have just been move forward, move forward, turn right. And I did it two times, but you didn't need to. You just used the repeat block. So I made a little mistake. Okay, looks uh, looks freezing out there. Catch a salmon on your way to the underwater ruins. So there's the salmon. So let's see, what does he need to do? Move forward, move forward, move forward, turn right. Move forward, move forward, move forward, turn. No, then he's just gonna go straight, right? Move forward. I wonder, huh? Let's try to see if we can get this going out well. So he's gonna, he's gonna move forward three times. I'm trying to think this through. Then he's gonna turn right. Then he's going to move forward. One, two, three. And then turn left. Okay. Then he's gonna move forward one, two, three, and turn right, and then move forward one, two, three. So move forward three times and then turn right, and then move forward three times. But then we're gonna be over the amount of blocks. So we have to try and think, um, what is our pattern here? We're moving forward three times and we're turning right. Then we're moving forward three times and we're turning left. Then we're moving forward three times and we're turning right. I wonder if we put all of this into the repeat. I don't know if this will work. Let's see. Well, I'm just kind of testing it out to see if it works. <laughs> Did it work? I mean, he got past it. Hang on. So this is what we really should be doing. Repeat moving forward three times, turning right, then repeat moving forward three times and turn left and put that all into the repeat until goal. So this gets really, this is, you know what they call this like a nested loop because you're putting loops, repeat blocks into re another repeat block. So it does get a little bit tricky, let me tell you. But um, it's okay, we have the video, so you guys can always just kind of copy what I have here if you're stuck, but you can always try it yourself too. So now I believe it should work because he's following this pattern of moving forward three times, turning right, and then moving forward three times and turn, turning left, and then he gets to the salmon. So woohoo, great job. Okay, let's watch this other video. Wow, another three puzzles solved. And we've caught a salmon. Not quite as exciting as piles of gold, but we'll take what we can get. And I have a feeling that Nautilus shell will come in handy later. I wonder what lurks in these ruins. Perhaps another hint. Let's take a look inside. My name is Nettie, and welcome to my ruins. We make decisions all the time based on conditions. If it looks like rain, then we'll grab an umbrella. If we're hungry, then we'll eat a snack. If we see a creeper, then we run in the opposite direction. Computers make these types of decisions too. They can actually respond to conditions using code. To program a response like this using your code command, select an if path block. Select the drop down to create the command. For example, if you write the command if path to the right and place turn right inside the conditional, then when Steve reaches an open path to the right, he will always turn right. If there's no opening to the right, he will not turn right. These conditional if commands are helpful when you run code in unpredictable situations, such as mysterious ruins and underwater caves. Try using the if blocks and take your code for a spin. Wow, Natty's ruins were awesome. I really got to move out of my parents' house. So what do you think? Are the conditions right for us to complete the final puzzles? Let's give it a go. All right, let's give it a go. So here we go. So now um, what it says is um, you found the underwater ruins. Search the sandstone for a chest containing prismarine treasure. So... 
It says repeat until goal, move forward. If path is to the right, what should we do? We should turn right. So we're using this conditional block, this blue conditional block. And that just pretty much tells the program, if something is true, then it will have, whatever you put in there will happen. If your path is to the right, then it will turn right. So let's run the code and see how it works. So see when he's going to the right, he'll turn if the path is to the right. So woohoo, great job guys. All right, now we are moving on. First icebergs, now lava. Get through this volcanic island and find the tropical fish in the coral reef. So where in the world is the tropical fish in the coral reef? I think it's right here. So we could maybe do repeat until go, move forward. If path is to the right, could we do that? Yeah, let's try it. Path is to the right, turn right. Let's give it a try and see if it works. So there he goes, he's going forward. If it's to the right, he's turning right. He's turning right. And then turning right. Yeah, it worked. Woohoo! great job guys. Coding experts. You made it to the reef. Now search for the heart of the sea. Use the blue and red coral to reach the treasure chest. So we're trying to get over here to the treasure chest. So let's see. Hmm. So if he goes straight, he moves forward. And what do we want to happen? Move forward. Hmm. We have to think about this. If standing on, they have blue or red coral. Hmm. If standing on blue coral, we could have turn right, and then we could go that keep going this way, and then he'll be on the next blue one. I don't know if that'll work though. Got to think about this for a minute. Okay, so let's move this in. Then let's have a move forward. If standing on blue coral, we'll have turn right. Then we'll have another move forward. If standing on red cor coral, we'll have a turn left. Let's just try it out and let's see what happens. So he's going, swimming. He got to the blue, he's turning right. He's turning right. Oh, whoops, it didn't work. Hang on, we have to think about what the problem could be. Let's just take out the move forward because he was crashing into the wall. Now let's run it and see what happens. So he gets on the blue coral, these little blue coral squares, turns right when he gets to the red, turns left. So he's following along. Well, he's got a long maze to go with this one. So he's going, 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 he turns and he gets, yay! Gets to the treasure chest, woohoo! Okay, so let's continue. Great job, guys. This is definitely tricky. So I would say, um, just if you get stuck, just follow with the video. It's no problem, okay? You can always go back to the video and just kind of see what I did and, and that way it'll help you through. Um, and don't worry, just try the best you can. Um, you don't, this, isn't, this is really just a great way for you to get exposed to trying this and thinking like this. Um, and don't worry if you don't get it all perfect. It's not a big deal, as long as you're trying. Um, there is a squid hiding somewhere in the ocean monument. Can you find it? So I wonder where it is. I think I see it over here. So what could we do? Repeat until goal. If standing on a sea lantern, so right here, we could do turn right, turn right. He go down here, he turn right. Turn right, I think we should just do the turn right. So we'll do move forward. If standing on a sea lantern, turn right. 
Let's see how that works. So he's going, he's swimming, 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 gets to a sea lantern, turns right, swimming, sea lantern, turns right, swimming, swimming, sea lantern, turns right, and then again, turns right, and turns right, and gets to the squid. Woohoo! Yay! Awesome. Awesome thinking skills. Build a wall of prismarine around the black concrete. This will activate the conduit and complete your challenge. So we want to build a wall around the black concrete. So how could we do that? So hmm. repeat until conduit is completed. We're going to move forward, place prismarine. If we're standing on sand, then turn right maybe, I don't know. I'm just gonna try this out. Let's see what happens. He's placing it. Hmm, no. I don't think I, I didn't do it right. Hang on, that's not right. Okay, so number one, these little things is, are not sand. Those are the sea lanterns. So I think that might be a problem. And then number two, let's see, place prismary, move forward. If standing on the sea lantern turn right, let's try and see if that works better. Because we're trying to make a square path around this whole shape here. So this might work better. It looks like it's working. So he's placing it. And every time he gets to a sea lantern, he's turning right. So it looks like he will be able to complete the square shape because we're making a square around the black concrete. So it looks like it works. Woohoo, great job. <clears throat> awesome. Okay, so that was lesson three. I would say it definitely is challenging. It does require like thinking and trial and error. So you see, we try it, we test it, it doesn't work. We go back, we try it, we test it until it works. Don't give up. And of course you can always go back to the video and just kind of copy what I did, but try it yourself and see if you're able to figure it out. Um, you know, that way at least you're using your brain and you're thinking about it and you're trying to see um, if you can figure it out. So, all right guys, so that's your lesson for this week, lesson three, uh, there's no typing, but if you did not do lesson one or two, please complete it this week. Um, you saw it took us a while to get through lesson three, right? And they do get harder as the weeks go on. So please, I'm just warning you, you, you will, it will be very, very hard and overwhelming to try and catch up with these coding lessons if you like try to do a bunch of them in one week. So my best advice is put the iPad down, put your devices down at home, shut YouTube off and spend 30 minutes doing the coding lesson, okay? Just set some time. You can easily do it any day. Um, just set aside the right amount of time and do it, okay? That way you're not going to be overwhelmed um, or getting zero, right? So make sure you keep up and that way you can really participate and enjoy and get the fullness out of the lesson. All right, guys, we'll see you next time, okay? Bye.